Perfect. And so um, do we have a representative from Investor Outreach that would uh, like to do the presentation or just report out? Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm on here. Lu Louise, you can go ahead if you're in the loop. Feel free. But no, we, I thought we did it last week. Um, I don't believe you had the, I don't, you didn't have enough time last week. Uh, Anchor Institution went. Um, yeah, only, only Anchor Institution was able to go, but if one of you guys want to pull up the doc to read the wins and challenges that was um, there and I can support in however way. Um, Angel, last week or two weeks ago, you sent us the uh, investor outreach wins and challenges. Um, I don't mind reading them out if you uh, don't feel comfortable. If we need more time, we can also have a uh, podcast go first and get more into so. um, I can I can pull them up. I was just pulling them up. I don't mind reading them. Okay. Um, I have them here. Um, I can start. Just go ahead. Go, go for it. So everyone can hear me okay, right? I'm assuming. Okay. So um, our wins, um, we were able to contact all the members um, on the existing outreach team during the year. Um, I didn't even realize that was a big win until Jenny pointed it out. Um, we were able to maintain um, a welcoming space um, in our meetings uh, that was able to break down stigmas of traditional investing uh, and to explain what investing in Ujima really is. Uh, the last meeting of the year that we had was a clear indicator and we had two new uh, young women, young women who had really um, just like the, the bad views towards like investing real deep capitalism stuff. Um, and they were really uh, distant, um, but we were able to basically say, no, that's not what we're about and, and welcome them. And, and they participated heavily in the meeting. Um, and then in terms of challenges, um, COVID prevented us from doing any investor outreach house parties like we used to do uh, at the beginning um, in 2019. Um, we also couldn't table events to be present and then to also you know, be, 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 be present to talk about investing in the Ujima Fund. Um, so that brought all, all sorts of challenges. Um, we also had a challenge trying to figure out how to make investing in Ujima valuable to the community um, in terms of, you know, we're, we're in this pandemic, we're all going through tough times and, you know, how do we find folks that have that extra, um, you know, cash to invest and also just attract folks to invest in Ujima um, from the community, from Boston proper. So. Um, those are some of the challenges that we had during the year. Um, and we didn't attract too many people to the investor outreach team for most of the year. It was me, Louise, and um, Jenny. Um, Louise, do you have anything to add to that? So I, that's it from us. We did get some people who in, seemed interested. Nice. Okay. But we don't uh, know how long we're going to keep them. That sounds good point, Louise. I, I'm going to ask Jenny if, she, if you did you want to uh, contribute anything, Jenny, uh, in support, or is it okay to ask questions? No, I think um, what Angel, as the staff observer, I think what Angel. Um, shared was captured a good amount of 2020. 
Um, I guess another win is really just to acknowledge all of um, the consistency on both Angel and Luis's side, because I don't know if you guys ever been like holding down the fort for something for like a long time. It's just the two of you. So that's definitely, I would say, just win an attitude of, of perseverance um, from Angel and Luis to hold down the fort to um, think about different ways to approach talking about investment. Um, because I think a lot of people uh, fear the their lack of knowledge. And I say that in quotation marks, um, but just understanding that, especially with Ujima, it's the stories of why do you invest that matters when you are talking to other investors. And I think, there was a lot of growth in that uh, thought process that from Louise sharing their stories and her story and um, Angel sharing theirs. So that would be the only thing that I would add as a staff observer. Thank you. I want, I want to open it up for uh, folks to ask questions uh, based on some of the challenges and wins that you've heard from Angel, Louise um, and support Jenny. Okay, one thing I still say about my story is, I say we're not just investing to make money, we're investing for a purpose and for community. It's not just to make money. So even if you lose, you might get, gain something in community or... Good point, good point. Yeah, because there's, I mean, there's different angles to talk about it. Um. This is more of a comment. It just sounds really amazing that you had that experience with the um, two people that joined that day and sort of what their assumptions were when they came in and the ability to welcome that and also just to be able to like have that engagement with them and, and, and go through that. It sounds really, really great. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a big deal, actually. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> and it's, that. Yeah, like, I mean, there, I feel like we probably all, like, encounter that, like, level of hesitancy when people hear you mention, like, money, and they're like, oh, that's capitalism, and you're like, well, okay. So <laughs> I'd love, like... That could be like some really cool notes or tips coming from investor outreach or something, just like, um, you know, thoughts on on pointers on handling that. And because um, it sounds like it was an awesome experience. Yeah, that's real. That's real. I mean, it sounds like you guys make it seem like it's only two people, but then there's also a multiplier effect. Who, who knows who they're talking to and bring it back into the fold? Um, so it's a, it's a big deal. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to take uh, too much on that. Um, I think one of the things as a question or just an idea, the, how, the, the idea of a house party, um, why couldn't you have a house party on zoom? I guess people wise, we, we, that was one of the solutions that we were thinking of doing like, but then, um, we, we never really got around to actually setting one up or translating. Yeah. Um, the house party, like, I guess, agenda or style to Zoom, but we got as far as talking about, like, and, and asking folks, either with phone calls, um, doing regular outreach, like, what, what can we do on Zoom to make it as welcoming? Because Zoom is sort of public, and people don't want to talk about their finances out there in public with people they don't know, so a house party is more <laughs> intimate. Yeah. Um, so we just didn't, we never got around to just attracting the folks to try it out and see, and see what would work. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, okay. And, uh, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pause for a second, uh, and give folks some time to kind of think a little bit more about what some of the things that they heard. Uh, and if we have some additional comments and questions, feel free to either write them in the chat or, uh, share them publicly. Uh, but I'm just going to give some space and time really quickly, about 30 seconds, 
uh, before we actually like consider uh, transitioning over to podcast. Okay, I don't even know if that was 30 seconds. I just kind of made that up, y'all. Just, just want to be honest about that. <laughs> it sounded like it was long enough. So <laughs> we're just gonna, we'll keep it moving. Thank you, thank you both. Thank, thank you, Louise, thank you, Angel. Um, and, uh, you know, both of your voices, particularly your experiences uh, and being a part of Ujima for such a long time and, and knowing the layout and uh, to Jenny's point, your persistence um, goes a long way. So um, you're doing amazing work. Uh, any way we can lift that, let us know. Um, I'm going to invite podcast um, to share how was 2020? I'm coming. I'm coming. Hold on. I'm a little lost in here. No worries. <sighs> how was 2020? Hello, everybody. I'm Joyce. Um, podcast crew. It's now the Ujima podcast crew. Before it used to just be podcast, now it's the Ujima podcast crew, which is great. Um, so I th the podcast started back in maybe the end of 2018 and 2000, early 2019. I think that's about right. And um, the first thing I would mention is that if you all have a SoundCloud account, please go there. If you don't have one, still go there. And the Ujima podcast is actually on SoundCloud under just that title, Ujima podcast. So you would get a good idea of what was going on with podcasts during that time. Everyone was involved, all the different committees, all the different um, staff members and members themselves as well. So um, the largest win I, I walk away with is the um, podcast for 2019 when we all started it. Um, we started off with about five people in the podcast. Um, we had two graduate students from MIT that worked with us consistently when we did the first podcast. So that was a great learning lesson. And they provided us with like different free trainings from the podcast garage, you know, on how you do a podcast, how you set it up. So those are some wins as well to get classes and um, great instructors, very experienced. So that was good. And so then we come to having, not having like students, interns working with us and teaching and learning from them. So we were now responsible for doing our own podcast and it, and it became challenging because we had to have someone who could edit. And that's the, for, from my experience, that seems like the largest piece is the editing. Um, we had great people that were working on it. We started out with a good heart and we started out with a lot of energy and we came up with the mysteries of our neighborhood, which was so much fun. And so um, we chose three things. Um, members were involved. Everybody got a say on, you know, what we were going to do. And so we decided to do one of the mysteries is check cashing. One of the other mysteries was the dispensary that opened up in Brookline. And then the third dispensary was going to be chiropractors because I, I don't know what happens in there. I don't understand all the chiropractic offices that we have in our community. And this is what we wanted to find out. It was a mystery, so we didn't know. So um, we were fortunate enough actually to get an interview with one of the managers at the check cashing that had just opened up in Nubian Square. And so um, li not limited, limited in information, because we were asking questions about like, how do you provide for the community? Do you give things back and those things? And he wasn't able to answer those. Um, but it was also a good plug-in for Ujima because we told him he should come to Ujima and see what we do and he'd probably find it interesting. But um, he, was, he was open, he was honest, you know, and he was gonna talk to the um, office to find out information about who we could talk to. Um, and then we proceeded to go outside and interview two other men that were just kind of standing there, just smoking a cigarette, kind of hanging out in their neighborhood. Um, and that was that was a good conversation as well. It was a very good interview. It was Sarah and myself who used to be on podcasts. Um, we also had Katie and Ibram um, do an interview with the owners of Frugal Bookstore, which was great, especially with check cashing and Frugal Bookstore neighbors and have always been neighbors until like check cashing obviously got that place before um, the bookstore could go in there. So that was a good interview as well. 
so those are our wins. And we still have all this information. We still have these interviews. And so the challenges um, for us now is re-jumping podcast. And so those were the challenges that start to happen because, you know, changes start to happen where, you know, people's lives start to change. Some people came back to Eugene, but some people didn't come back. And so it was just a constant um, turnover for, I would say, about six months or so, maybe longer. Um, and we had, you know, some tra uh, tragedy that took place during that time as well. So that slowed uh, podcast down. But um, we still have all this information. And so now it's how do we re-jump podcast again? And um, we now have staff members from UGM that come and um, sit with us when we have our meetings and, you know, how, and us is me, I'm us. <laughs> Claudia, Claudia wants to join. So, um, you know, is interested in joining. So where we started to have a conversation about should we change the day of uh, Ujima, which is the first Wednesday of every month. So we started talking about that. Um, let me see what else. Um, other challenges. Just, um, we just need someone who, who knows how to do the do with podcasts. That's what we need. Um, I, I, I have nominated myself as the voice of podcast, you know, so, but that's an agreement with members too, though. You know, I said I would do it. So I would do it. I love it. I think it's great. I would love to get back to it and in interviewing people, especially during this time, because I think there's a lot of valuable information out there about how people are surviving and how people are finding new ways of doing things, which is, you know, it's the new normal. So um, it would be great to talk to those people. But we have come up with, you know, a few different ideas about what podcasts could do. And the first thing is, of course, is to get new people to join. So if any of you are interested, I will put, um, oh, I see someone's already put SoundCloud in. Thank you. Um, you could write to Ujima Podcast Crew at gmail.com. Don't know if we have that account, but it'd be great if we did. Yay. <laughs> clearly on the jokes of the group, clearly. Um, but yeah, so... That's, you know, podcasts is, could be fun, could be great if it's something that you're interested in doing. Um, we've got some great people we work with. There's some great stories here. There's some great things we could do. Um, and I think that's it for podcasts. So I open it up for questions, unless you guys have anything else that you want me to mention or talk about. Um, I don't have um, too much more to add, but what I will say is that, um, you know, in 2020, we were also able to activate the podcast um, SoundCloud page through other means. Um, so we did uh, record a lot of, you know, we do uh, Zoom events now, uh, as that's the way that we're living. And so we were able to activate it by um, transferring some of our cultural events to MP3 format and uploading those. Um, so the podcast is still kind of active, um, but we wanna be able to produce our own, you know, our, co our own content as we are uh, with our members. Right, thank you. Thanks, Sierra. Just wanna open it up for anyone who may have any questions for podcasts. Uh, I have some, are you thinking of, uh, investigating any certain issues like the, like say if something's going on, you know, like racism or like some schools, the kids aren't, like the kids not being able to go to school and stuff like that. I mean, I think that's a great idea. Um, I would suspect with that comes um, a lot of knowledge and a lot of know-how or even being able to teach people how to have those type of interviews and things of that sort. I think it would be great if podcasts could do those kind of things. That, yeah, I like that. Thank you, Louise. You're welcome. Well, I like to get what the people are really feeling, you know, issues mm -hmm. that really affect their lives. Right, right. That's what I was saying. Yeah, like, especially with like COVID and just just the pulse of the community, you know, for everybody. People, people want to talk. I think if you start talking to people, they'll talk, you know, social distancing, they still want to talk. So I think there's a lot of good things out there. Maybe we should all just do that. Just start having like random conversations with people and asking if you can record it. I think um, oh, at a Ujima I might have event, some nice. I might have some Trump supporters. <laughs> what, what were you saying, Angel? 
um, at some type of Ujima event. If obviously it's online, so it's it's difficult. But if anything is done, that's you know in person, even if social distance or anything like that, um, that would be like nice at a community garden to show, you know, people coming together or something like that. Yeah, um, that would be definitely a nice topic for a podcast. Right. Oh, and, and thank you, Angel, because you just actually triggered something for me. Um, so I believe in Sierra, Johnny, please correct me um, if I'm wrong, but um, on February 3rd, we're going to be talking about postpartum depression during COVID. So for birthing people who um, perhaps pregnant now or have had children within, let's just even say the last two years, you know what I mean? There's a lot going on for parents right now, birthing people. So we were going to get a midwife and um, a social worker to come in and have that conversation. So February 3rd, you guys at 7.15, is that correct? Sierra, Johnny? Meaning correct, yes, I had a thumbs up. Okay, great. So, um, I'm sorry, Louise? Same time as Ujima. No, it's one at 7.15, not six though, right? So it would be one of the workshops, I guess, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, for a podcast or something? Yeah, yeah. member team meeting. Member team meeting, yeah. That'll be interesting. Yeah, I think I think it will be. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. There's a lot going on. We can do a lot to help just by conversation. And I love the fact that, um, you know, folks can talk, but I love the fact that you're such a people person, Joyce, that you, you kind of activate folks too at the same time. So when it's going to do interviews, you know, glad it's you. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to pause one more time, uh, give folks an opportunity to say a little bit more in terms of questions or thoughts. Uh, I just want to be mindful of time because we have two more groups that are, that are going to be um, sharing as well too. Um, so if you know for a fact, you have a longer question uh, that may require some investigation. Uh, feel free to put it in the chat box. Uh, that would be helpful. Um, I was just gonna say, um, or ask Joyce, um, when I attended in the beginning of the month, um, we kind of talked about some of the um, types of positions or roles that people mm -hmm. um, could fill to really, to really activate um, uh, different aspects that are needed to do the full cycle of generating a podcast. Um, and maybe if we can drop in the chat what some of those could be or are, and if people um, know people that are interested in that type of thing um, to join us on the, on the third. Yes, thanks. Thank you so much. It's a good idea. And I say, what about neighborhood groups? You know, groups that have a plot in the neighborhood, like, like on development and everything. They get together and they. Yep. <laughs> so associations. Yeah. Uh, uh, those that are connected to like community development corporations, things like that. Or just neighborhood groups, like say in South Boston, we have the lower end group, we have the West Broadway Neighborhood Association, Dorchester Heights, City Point. Yeah. I like that. All right. So um, thank you, Joyce. Yeah. And thank you for those that raised some pretty good questions as well. Continue, please feel free to continue to uh, send some questions and thoughts in the chat box as well. Uh, as you notice, I'm trying to make sure that we utilize that as much as possible. Um, all right. So I'm going to ask whether uh, arts and culture uh, can present their 2020 wins and challenges. Anyone from arts and culture uh, ready to, to represent? Okay, nice. I'm gonna put myself on mute. Hi. Hey. I'm Claudia, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, and I'm not sure if anybody else is Gonna um, gonna speak as well. Um, there are a bunch of people here from arts and culture, um, but I think for 2020 it was a trying year in so many ways on so many different levels. And I was thinking back, and I was like, "What do I even remember?" And it's like, of course I remember 2020. Um, but I think the biggest 
um, when I was thinking about this discussion that we had in July, um, and we were kind of going off of a little bit um, on one of the Ujima wires and um, discussing the gig economy. Um, and we were sort of focusing on the um, dangers of seeing art as ephemeral. Um, and I thought that was a really, really powerful conversation. Um, and I don't know if anyone else that was present for that um, has any thoughts on that or other, um, other sort of like wins during 2020. But I think, um, you know, just seeing the impact of arts and culture sector in general um, during the, and, and the weight that arts and culture carried um, during the pandemic in general, um, as, um, as art and culture producers within society, um, as being something that lost a lot of sort of economic um, support, but also carrying the weight of um, being one of the largest forces that brings people into commune and sort of the duality of that. Um, so within that, I think we, we um, sort of had been talking for a while about shifting from our arts incubator model and um, some of the dr main drivers in that or players in that were um, Tamashi and James and obviously Mobology as well, but shifting from um, an arts incubator to a learning pod. Um, and sorry, my dog still has a cold. So that's what that like insane noise <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, calm down, waffles. It's okay. I know it's upsetting. You don't like it either. So, um, so yeah, it's so hard to concentrate when he's doing that. Sierra, do you have anything to add for a moment? Yeah. Um, thank you, Claudia. I was just going to say that I think that um, you're completely right. I think that we started off um, 2020 with the uh, arts incubator model, and um, we had been trying that for a eight months, I believe, or nine months um, since the year before and had kind of come to a stopping point. I know waffles. Um, and it had come, kind of come to a stopping point um, because a lot of people had to drop off. Previous to March, arts and culture was in person. Um, and with there not being a, a physical place for us to meet up, you know, uh, a lot of people that would usually come to uh, JP to City Life to meet with us um, could no longer join us because they just had shifting priorities. Um, and so we, you know, it was small at first, <laughs> right? Like it was like, I think like four people or five people um, that were consistently um, in the arts and culture space with us um, through the summer. And, um, you know, there was one conversation, I can't remember which month it was, you're probably right, Claudia, it was in July or August, where we decided uh, officially to like switch the model of uh, arts and culture um, and to do this uh, arts learning pod thing. So, um, so James led the first one with Mobology uh, and it was amazing. I wasn't there, but I know that it was amazing. Um, and uh, that was the first iteration um and you know folks learned a lot there was like uh, it was based on african film um and so you know there is a lot of uh i, I guess i would call it like a teach-in as well as a practice portion um and the last one being you know a, a showing off or like a mini film festival that folks were able to have on zoom that was super dope um really amazing stuff um now we're in the second iteration with mobology leading um with Mobology leading a session that is um, both uh, a lot of healing work as well as um, kind of a comment on community-centered art and design. Um, you can find the first session on YouTube, um, on our YouTube page right now. Um, just type in Ujima Boston um, and you'll be able to find it. Um, but it's really interesting and it's, uh, yeah, it's amazing. And so I'd say like some of the wins were that, you know, podcasts, I'm sorry, not podcasts, Arts and Culture was able to rebuild uh, or begin to rebuild um, our, our um, I guess the member team, because a lot, like I said, a lot of people dropped off. So a lot more people joined um, and have been joining consistently, um, you know, every month. And, you know, with the through line of, you know, viewership practice, and then kind of like a, a collective, uh, uh, 
what it, like a collective show at the end of the three months. I, I can't remember what, it, what we called it. Um, through the learning pod model, um, it brings people back and it keeps people engaged um, because everybody wants to talk about art. Everybody wants to learn about art. You know, um, there's just so many ways for it to go. And I think that um, right now a place to share and express ideas is just like at the forefront of everybody's, you know, what everybody wants to do uh, when it comes to art and culture. We just want to discuss and think and be super theoretical slash, you know, practice a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. 2020 wins, challenges, and learns. Claudia, did you have a learn? Um, also Mercedes. Always. I'm always learning, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I think it was... I, I think like my big learn for the year in general is like to slow down and listen. I'm a big talker and um, to <laughs> um, share space, I think has been a really big thing. And I really forgot how much I like really love making film and I think um, and video and just like being able to like have that opportunity to do that and share it with people and not feel weird about it was really, really nice. <laughs> um, Bravery. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, because, you know, like I have an arts background. I used to make a lot of art and all of my friends make art. And then it was I stopped making art for years and years and years. So like being like, oh, now I'm an artist again, always felt a little awkward because everybody's been doing all of this stuff the whole time. So it was a great way to like get back into that. And um, the learning pods are really, really beautiful and um, just a really wonderful journey into what, um, has been an inspiration, like the first sessions were like, what was um, inspiring about African film for James and Mobology. And it was very, very, um, like a very personal look at um, African film through, um, through both of them. And it was really nice. So yeah. My only problem is, is that podcast and arts and culture are on the same night. So I'm always- <laughs> We're gonna to try to fix it. Um, Mercedes, you had you had a comment in the chat. Do you want to say it out loud for the people in the back? Yeah. Hey, uh, um, just a uh, world building and like sitting with world building and storytelling. Um, also, feeling like kind of relieved around um, like what that work looks like. Um, getting some validity, some reassurance around um, the work that I do in particular. Um, the learning pods, I agree, have definitely been helpful for me with that. Um, and yeah, that's been my major learn so far. I'm excited to learn more. Yeah, um, I love what you wrote in the chat. Art is essential in the progression of Black people, particularly storytelling and world building. Um, and I think that as we you know, part of the charge of uh, arts and culture organizing is to kind of remake the world, you know, and remake the narratives of the world. So I just, I love what you said. Yeah, that was great. We should hold on to that. Thank you. Dope. <laughs> I mean, that's the only, I, that's the only thing I can offer. I think I accidentally, and then I'll just open it up for some q and I guess. Uh, so I'm just stepping in it. Um, I accidentally got placed in the arts um, uh, and culture uh, member team. And I was like, I was supposed to go to another group, but I accidentally got placed in that one. And they were showing a film. And I remember like the effervescent like feeling that I got just like watching the film. And I was just like, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to hold on to that experience as much as possible because I just thought it was beautiful. And I think one of the films was created by uh, it was a short film by one of the members that were in the the team at that point and just feeling like wow like look at this amazing thing that someone had had created and to think that there's a collection of these that you all put in together was just like i don't know it was like out of this world for me um so just saying that you all are producing a lot of great things um um so let me take a step back really quickly um are there any questions about what you uh heard uh do you have any questions, particularly for those who've been involved with this uh, member team, 
um, or just general ideas that you're thinking about? Didn't I just take myself? Oh, there it is. What was that, Joyce? Oh, sorry. I thought I was reading. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought I had closed out by accident. I was like, did I just do that? You're fine. I was just making sure that you knew. That's all. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> I'm muting now. Okay. All right, y'all. Okay. Um, we will transition over. Thank you. Thanks, Sierra. Thanks, Claudia. Thanks, Mercedes. Um, all right. So we will go over, transition over to business support team. Um, ah! <laughs> between Waffle, Joyce, and <laughs> that. That was the best, though. That was the best. I think that Waffle had the best interruption of all because what? it sounds like hey. a human. Waffles is a human. <laughs> I, yeah, I thought somebody was talking. No, I think I think Jenny's right up there. I think she's right up there. There's some competition going on. I'm sorry, y'all. I just accidentally closed the tab, and you know when you have a lot of stuff yep. on. Yep. <laughs> yes. And that just hurt so much because it was for business support. Okay, carry on. Hold on. <laughs> um. So I'll invite Angel Louise uh, to speak to uh, business support. And Jenny, whenever you're ready, just jump on in. So I'll just step back. Well, I just, I just, just started getting interested in business support because I, I mean, well, like I found out now that Haley House is one of your places. Now they're doing delivery all over Boston. So now I can, and Vaughn me was yours, but they were a little uh, too spicy for me. But, <laughs> but, you know, I kind of think that we'd, I'm, I'm just joining it because you want to know how, what ways can we help business? Because I might approve a business because of, it might be something a lot of people like, but I don't like. And, and I mean, ways they need advertisement or, or we, they, we might have to advocate for them a different, I mean, just find out what they want and need. It's tough now. That's that's great context. I don't know if you, uh, Jenny, as you as you open it up to kind of say a little bit more about what business support does. Right, <laughs> found it. I just was able to open one doc. Um, so just hi, Jenny, I'm business alliance coach, and business support meets on the fourth Wednesday every month. And the goal of business support is to really just support the businesses within the business alliance. So act as the, the driving force behind supporting businesses in the business alliance. Um, I do have a collection of the wins and challenges and these are not my words verbatim. It's literally from our doc from 2020 to, yeah, 2020. So I'm just gonna read some things and then make space for Angel to share since Angel has been one of the most consistent members. Shout out again to Angel, <laughs> but I'm gonna read um, some of the wins and challenges now. Um, so business support started back up and started to re-engage as a member team around February, March of 2020. Um, it wasn't an active group, so just the fact that it was, um, we were considering it a win that it re-engaged and started back up February, March, and has had steady attendance. Um, in 2020, the team did a solid inreach. So during the start of COVID, there was a call from all member team to do inreach to its members. And I think that business support team was one of the teams that really committed to doing inReach and connecting with business owners on a human level, just like asking questions on how they're doing. Um, 
we started to build a skill directory for business support teams. So what that means is capturing the skills that are in uh, the members that are, sorry, the skills of the members on business support team. And we started doing that. That was pretty awesome. There's two structures that we've placed in our meetings, one of them being Skillshare. <clears throat> and Skillshare, it continues with the skill directory, is uh, an opportunity during our meetings to allow a member of business support team to share their skills that can support um, good business good business alliance members. So we created a skill scare, skills share section, tongue twister, <laughs> where members of the team could provide expertise to member team and had um, one successful member share and that was Myrna. She has um, our marketing company and she did a great job. I feel like we did more than one, but one clear one that I captured that was captured in the notes was the skill share that Myrna did, which was pretty great. Um, we've had as a win more in-depth conversation about mission and vision, which was a task to the member teams to kind of get gain clarity about. There's been several uh, meetings where the team has had a conversation about that and how Ujima could show up in the TA space. I don't know if you guys know, but when someone says TA, that encapsulates a lot. So we wanted to be uh, thoughtful as Ujima on how we show up in the TA space. Uh, the next one is actually a shout out to Sierra. Um, there has been a new wire a new wire created, uh, Ujima's Business Wire, which is the new official newsletter for business Ujima loves. Um, it's a dedicated resource for business community. It's designed to communicate and increase awareness of the various resources and advocacy happening on behalf of BIPOC-owned business in Boston. And the team has been uh, interested on how to actively engage and share out to community and support the growth of that a newsletter. And that is what I captured so far for wins. I don't know if Angel, if you had anything that you wanted to add before I go into the challenges. Yeah, I got one thing to add. Um, the group was always, and it amazed me from being, being, you know, from Providence and away from Boston, but you all always shared um, resources during COVID for businesses, for us to share out with the internal folks that, you know, we had done in reach with on a personal level that wanted to hear more. So I use it to send to a few folks all the time that I had uh, in my mind that I spoke to over the phone from Boston and even shared it out here with folks um, who may have had businesses in Boston that I may have run into. So I consider that a definite win when businesses are struggling and you guys are just sharing information on resources. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. Um, thank you for sharing. So for challenges, um, I listed, I have clarity about how we are defining TA support. Again, it, it goes back to the win is we're having the conversation. <laughs> the struggle is there's there hasn't been a clear definitive definition of TA support and then being careful not to fall into the TA trap that's in Boston, which I, this is Jenny, <laughs> not saying I'm not speaking for every single member of business support team, but one of what I define as the TA trap is um, kind of like a savior complex that a lot of consultants go in with when they're dealing with businesses where they wanna swoop in and provide, <laughs> <laughs> provide like, oh my God, this is gonna solve your business without ever building relationship. Um, so it's more transactional uh, than, than relationship-based. So 
we, I feel like a challenge has been not falling into that TA trap. <laughs> so that's a clear challenge that we're working on. Um, second is, although we've had steady attendance coming throughout meetings and, and it, it new people and old, uh, it hasn't been consistent month to month. So it's not the same persons or same group of people showing for each meeting, which sometimes makes it hard to continue the work uh, on a monthly basis. And the third challenge that I have on this stock is we weren't able to successfully plan and host um, a re-engagement event for the Business Alliance OG members. It was something that was on uh, the agenda several times, um, but with COVID and everything, it was just hard to like visualize it and plan for it. Uh, it was one of the things that we wanted to do last year. And I'm gonna make space for any other challenges that I haven't list and then make space in general for anyone to share any lessons learned. And as people do that, I'll just preference and say that um, at 715, we're gonna start our member teams and that's within a couple of minutes. Um, so please feel free to chime in now. Um, we, could, we could switch to questions, but that was all I had on my end from, from the doc. Thank you, Jenny. Any questions for uh, business support? Uh, anything that stood out? If not, is there are there any learns um, that Angel, Louise, or Jenny wants to Kind of share in addition. Well, I like that Jenny saying that she doesn't want to be a savior. Because I mean, because that is the way so many things work. The businesses they give money and they want they want results right away to make themselves look good or something, to make themselves feel good. But you can have the best attention sometimes, and it doesn't come out the way you want. I really like that. I don't like that savior. I'm so much better. Yeah, good point, Louise. Um, yeah, in addition to that, there's sometimes consultants will leave a plan uh, without actual tools to use that plan. Um, and that, that all falls in the same vein. All right. And then Joyce put in here, uh, not to forget the SoundCloud uh, for podcasts as well. All right, so we're hitting 715. I'm going to stop.